Hey, Dan from danwagner.co with a quick tutorial on how to write a median ifs user defined function which mirrors the functionality of some ifs or average ifs. It just calculates the median instead of the sum or the average. There is a lot to cover in this function as it is a bit advanced, and so I'm going to dive right in. First things first. We have two input variables, median range, which mirrors exactly what you'd get with average range or sum range inside the average ifs or sum ifs function. And then we have range and criteria pairs, which is a parameter array. And parameter array is perfect for this situation because it allows your user to input an arbitrary number of input ranges and criteria, which is exactly what we need for a statistic ifs type statement. The guard clauses are relatively straightforward. We make sure that the passed in median range is not a null range. We make sure that we have an even number of additional, rel uh, excuse me, range and criteria pairs right so the user needs to enter in a criteria like greater than or equal to or whatever for each passed in range and that's what's happening here and finally we need to be sure that each range that's passed in has the exact same dimensions as the median range because essentially what we're doing in this calculation is a row level comparison so if all of the values in the row match all the criteria successfully, we can add that value to our median accumulator and eventually calculate the median of it. And if one of the ranges that we passed in does not have the same number of rows or columns as the median range, then we know we're going to have a problem because we won't be able to consistently check. Now that we're through the guard clause section, let's review where the magic actually happens here. So the first half of this function is essentially identifying the operator, like less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, not equal to, etc., and the, the threshold for checking. So as we work through the range and criteria pairs, we identify the operator, which can be, like I mentioned before, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, not equal to. And we do this by looking at the two leftmost characters inside the range and criteria pairs um, object that we're taking a look at here, right? So we're inside the actual criteria. The does not equal case is a little bit tricky because it could be a number or a string. And so if that is what we're, what we're dealing with, we need to verify whether or not the value is a number or a string. And so we use is numeric and not is empty to identify numerical values. And otherwise, if it's not numerical, we know we're gonna use it as a string. And so if that's the case, we just do this string type of assignment here. So let's suppose that our user did not pass in a less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or not equal to uh, operator. Let's say they just use less than, greater than, equal to, or maybe even no operator at all. If that's the case, we open up another select case statement here, and we check for less than, we check for greater than, we check equal, which again, like does not equal, is a little bit tricky, right? Because it could be either a number or a string. Fortunately, we've already developed the logic here, so we make sure in a numeric case that the cell value is numeric and that it's not empty. And if that's the case, we we make our threshold a number, uh, otherwise we make our threshold a string. And assuming that the user did not put in an operator, we're gonna check for equality. So in that case, 
we make our operator equal to, uh, and then we use the exact same logic, the is numeric and not is empty check to ensure that for numeric values we get a we get a number, and for non-numeric values we get a string. And so once we have wrapped up identifying this operator and the threshold, our next step is to check each cell that was passed in in the param array against the threshold. And this is where we really start executing here. So let's say we want to take a look at the, well, let's look at the greater than or equal to situation. So if the string operator is greater than or equal to, we want to check that the cell of interest is greater than or equal to the threshold that we determined. And if that is the case, then we set our all matched variable to true. And if not, we set it to false. And we work our way through the rest of this case statement here. And down at the bottom of this loop, we check the all matched Boolean to see if it's true or false. If this variable is ever false, we know that that row can never be considered because it failed one of the criteria, right? So as soon as Boolean all matched is equal to false, this statement catches it and exits the for loop. And if that's the case, then we do not add it to our accumulator and we work our way onto the next row. However, if every cell in the statement matched the criteria that was passed in, then Boolean all matched will be true. And if that's the case, then down here, we add our value to this accumulator array, which is this variant accumulator. Before adding it, however, we do one last check, right? We want to make sure that the value is numeric because you can't calculate the median of a string. And we also want to make sure that the value is not empty as well because, again, empty uh, is, is not something you can calculate the median of. And if that's the case, then we, we skip over this, this addition. But if not, we add our value to the accumulator, we resize the accumulator, and we move on to the next row. Eventually, we'll have worked our way through all of the ranges, all of the criteria, and all of the rows. Once we get there, our last two steps are to get the accumulator size correct, right? We know that every time we add a value, we, we increment the accumulator size by one as well. And so if we're at the end of our loop, we know we have an empty element there at the end. And so we go ahead and, and kind of chop that one right off. And finally, we calculate the median of the accumulated values using worksheet function dot median, which is totally amazing. It takes variant input. I absolutely love it. And to demo this functionality really quick, I have some examples here. So suppose we want the median cost per ton for apples, which have uh, you know less than 4,000 stores. So if we were doing this by hand, we might filter and grab apples, and then we might filter again and say uh, less than or equal to 4,000. Awesome. We get these five rows. And the way we'll do this with our median ifs is exactly how you would do it with a sum ifs or average ifs. And we so we're going to pass in D2 to D30, which is our cost per ton, right? Because that's what we want the median of. Then we're going to pass in our product column and make sure that it's equal to apples. And then we're going to pass in our store column and make sure it's less than or equal to 4,000.
And I'm going to clear those filters now. Paste in the median ifs function and sweep. So this column over here in I is me checking with Excel's built-in median formula over the over the values that I know are a match. We get 387 and 387 for both. That means our median ifs is functioning as expected. And so I'm just going to kind of run down the line here. I will make this example sheet available to you so you can play around with the data set and the enhanced function as well. You can see we're getting matches 8,783, 338,653. Let's just keep moving on down the line. This one should equal 304. And finally, this one should equal ugh, 487,424, and boom. So there you go. With some, some clever variable inputs using a param array and a, a very consistent methodology for looping through rows and ranges and criteria, we were able to implement a median ifs function that operates exactly like sum ifs or average ifs. Please do not hesitate to reach out with any questions. I know this one is kind of advanced and I hope that you have a lot of fun playing around with median ifs, maybe implementing your own function, right? Like if you want to do mode ifs, for example, you could just change worksheet function dot median to worksheet function dot mode. It's that easy and uh, have a good day.